of Roll with the Fox. Start your comments early, guys. We have a sort of a, a, a makeshift set up here, but we are filming from Henzo Gracie Holland in Tilburg. I'm here with my good friend and a fellow Henzo Gracie black belt, Camilla Verhoeven. He's got two schools in Holland and people that he affiliates all over Europe. So guys, uh, we're gonna go over some of the questions that we've received. Guys, start to say hello because we have Hank behind the camera. Something in for Mike. Mike, I have to leave him back in America. <laughs> good for him. <laughs> yeah, good for him. Although I almost left him nicely. And uh, so, guys, the first question that we have um, is from a. Uh, uh, it's it's re related to the flower sweep for the armbar. And the question was, what happens when I attempt a flower sweep and the guy posts? his elbow on the floor. So in other words, you don't quite sweep him, but his arm is not quite exposed. So it's somewhere in between. So I'm gonna to try to duplicate. Guys, just so you know, Kemal's elbows are very fragile right now. Many, many years of kickboxing. Or jiu-jitsu. And jiu-jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I take credit for some of that. I have stretched Enrique's right arm quite well. Maybe I can do that for you too. <laughs> so, long story short, guys. Uh, he can fully extend, so I'm going to go only up to the point where I feel the tension, but you, you can imagine what I'm trying to do. So, when I try the, the flower sweep and Camel posts his elbow on the ground. So guys, I control Camel's height with my right leg, okay? So it's not, it's not I'm not stuck. I, normally, if this happens, I would probably actually put my elbow in front of his face and I can bring it up. But then notice I can elevate him with my right leg. This is all I need. Now his elbow is no longer on the ground. And actually, when you do this, the arm bar becomes extremely, extremely tight. I'm gonna do it again, but you have to remember, this is very important. When you arm bar in people and they stack you, there's a couple of different ways you can prevent that stack from happening. And one is to you know, off-balance them in you know, sort of uh, one direction or the other direction. The other one is usually with arm bars, you have the, the ability to lift your hips enough where the elbow comes off the ground. That's all you need. You just don't want him to have full weight in that arm, whether it's on, uh, on the fist, whether it's on the hand, whether it's on the elbow. So let's look at it one more time. So I control his posture. He puts his elbow. So I'm gonna lift him enough to get the exposure that I need. Now guys, this is done. This, I'm not even gonna try to do this, but this is done, all right? So if I, I hope I answered that question. Um, what, uh, what I want to go over, this is actually a kind of an interesting question we got. It's on the last episode where um, a viewer had a question. Guys, by the way, I don't have the app. I, I had the YouTube app. I deleted it, so I hated it. So I use, use the web, web browser. <laughs> but I do look at the questions and I try to answer them as well. So what I want to do is, is uh, the question was about the Alex Volkanovsky and, um, and Ryan Ortega fight. There was two questions, two parts to it. The question was, um, how did, how did uh, Alex Volkanovsky escape the guillotine and the triangle? Now, understand that I believe uh, Craig Jones was, uh, is, is one of Volkanovsky's jiu-jitsu coaches. You know, Craig is one of the top grapplers in the, in the world has tremendous game, has, so obviously the, the part of the answer is, is the guy's very, very, very skilled and tough to be escaped, to, to escape but such near submissions. Um, but there is, I, I believe there is a couple other things that, that I, I didn't see the fight itself, but I did the next day, uh, I, I did look at the, the near finishes or the, the submission attempts. And one thing, um, that I noticed uh, with, with guillotines, if you watch any of my guillotine videos, you almost never see me guillotining somebody from the mount. And the reason for that is when, I'm, when people are mounted, you need to keep, keep your hips down to make sure you kind of stay, stay heavy on the guy, so which makes you naturally arch. As you know, my guillotines tend to be more crunching, compression. So if, I, if, if Kemo or anybody is on top of me, I can crunch. When I'm mounted, I need to keep my hips heavy to make sure I don't get dislodged easily, which makes the, the mounted guillotine relatively weak. So if I mount, I will usually switch 
into either iron fist guillotine or eye packing arm. So that, that is one of the reasons why you will rarely see me to hit a clean guillotine. Now high elbow is better, is, is better because the high elbow is just, just really tight, even if you mount it. So if you if use that high elbow, but if you use a different variation of guillotine, like the one I use for, for me, which is very effective, it's very effective from the bottom, it's very effective when I'm passing guard, if, if the guy's trying to take me down. But I would consider it probably the least effective from the mount because at, at that point it becomes more of a crank pain, not a constriction move which will put the guy out. And for a guy of Volkanovski, uh, uh, anybody that's in the UFC, the, 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 you know, you talk about the top level fighters in the world, uh, anybody of that level will, you'll need to threaten to put him out, not just pay. They will, generally speaking, not have to pay. So that's my, my view on the deity. Um, again, let me just show you real quick. So I'm mounted on you. I'm not gonna pull, but this is what I'm talking about. So if I'm mounted, if rather than compressing, I would I need to bring my hips down to make maintain pressure on Kemal's hips. I'm not squeezing because he's got a bad neck too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we may need a therapist, guys. So you notice how by keeping my hips down, I kind of naturally pull up on his head. And that's, as you know, my guillotine, that's not how I want to do things. I want to use compression. Okay? Now, I want to go to the triangle. There is, that was an amazing attempt. Um, so what wound up happening, oh, wait, actually he was, yes, on the left side of him. So this was an amazing attempt, right? So Brian being high level jiu-jitsu guys, he knows what he's doing. So Volkanovski was trying to posture up. Brian actually started to go under the leg. This is, once I'm under the legs, once I thwart the attempt to slam me, I pull Kevin towards me, okay? So I pull him towards me because he wants to sit back and Volkanovski actually dumped his leg in. So now this is, yeah, it's, it's bad, but it's not bad enough. So if, if he could have managed to keep him close, <coughs> I think it would have been way better, way better, more more effective. So I think this is such a, I don't know if it's a mistake or Volkanovski just took an opportunity uh, really a little quicker, but basically once guys, once he starts to, uh, separate from you. That choke is not as tight as bringing him in. So Brian did everything right uh, up until that point. I believe he should have immediately, once he went under the leg, which effectively squashes a possibility of a pickup and a slam, I think he should have immediately start to bring your knees to your chest, which would have prevented Volkanovski from falling backwards. Because once he does, he got the leg in, and you could see that the Kimmel's face was was turning red, but now the choke was not quite the same way as when I did it that exact step by step. Do we do we have any any questions? Any uh, anybody complaining about sound quality? <laughs> uh, no. Good. No uh, project. No, later, somebody later maybe. <laughs> later, later comments. Yeah. Uh, there's one uh, I've looked at many of your guillotine videos. My main problem with finishing is that grip fighting that prevents me from really getting any bite. Ah, um, if you can clarify, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start talking about this, but if you can clarify, where do you usually set it up from when the guy is turtle? I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing that you usually set it up from turtle. So, if you can confirm that, I'm going to assume that you basically start to set up a guillotine from turtle. The problem with turtle is guys are very good at defending their neck and preventing people from some achieving a dominant position. So I'm a big believer of this. Can be from sprawl control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So turtle. Yeah, yeah. yeah I understand. Yeah. So yes, uh, usually if the guy is coming forward to try to take you down or maybe reverse the position, you can usually get a good grip and finish the guillotine. When you have somebody in the turtle and they go into a good defensive mode, meaning they, they protect the, the hands from coming in and get to the proper places. As you know, my grip is, the, it's almost like a miniature rear naked choke. Here's the trachea, one karate, the second karate. So if I cannot get that grip, that means the guy's done a very good job, very defensive. You have to start to think something else. 
This is a very, very big point because many people try to say, okay, I'm, I want to do this. Um, I just taught a, we we're doing a big camp here in, in his other school in Breda starting tonight. And well, here it's 4.30 in the afternoon, six o'clock. But I just did a small seminar in, well, it wasn't as small as over 30 people, but for me, it's uh, in, in Münster, in Germany. And uh, well, I had one of the guys ask me, you know, he, uh, I was teaching split guard, and he was, he, he's, he was like, what do I do? Like, he's not giving me the arms. He's like this. Well, you could either grab the arm and force it, which is not my game, but the other possibility is <laughs> just, just, just be on your knees, and if he tucks in, I pack the neck. I attack the neck. Yeah, what winds up happening, his hands come up now, and either you get the guillotine, or what I, what I did is I actually attacked, came up, and then when he tried to, I basically held up the split ball. So the point that I'm trying to make is that you can, um, you have to switch. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over a couple of things you could possibly do. Hopefully I won't break Kemal. You can see that he's not as flexible as every day. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Let's see if we can stretch some, some joints a little bit more. So when a guy turtles up and has good defenses, so usually what, what, they, what it means is they, they start to either protect their neck, sometimes their elbows flare up, or their elbows are close to their hips. If, if I cannot get my guillotine, if he's fighting well, I will switch into an arming guillotine. Okay? So if I cannot get in, and a lot of times with the knee, I will actually go more for an arm in because of the friction. I, I don't want to get my hand caught in this, you know, like short down in those ways. So if I feel like he's grip fighting, I will switch into an arm in. Now, once I have the arm in, there's a couple of things I can do. So one of them is if I can pull, push into him and start to isolate that arm with my leg, get it deep. And now... I have arm and guillotine. So that's one possibility. But a lot of guys that are that good at defending and fending off any decent grip. When you have an arm and guillotine grip, and the guy's still not, you, you don't feel confident that you can control his, in this case, Kevin's left arm with your leg. What we're gonna do is you're gonna basically put a Peruvian necktie on him. I'm not a huge fan of Peruvian neckties as a submission. But what you can do, you think you can take it? Yeah. All right. So you, you attack Peruvian necktie, which will force him to roll. And when he rolls, I switch. As, as, at any time uh, I, I sort of start to fail with the initial guillotine, I switch into Anaconda. That's probably one of the easiest submissions you can ever, or transitions you can ever do. It doesn't require a lot of big movement. It's, it's a very, just uh, switch the grip. So, but Kevin, so if I get, I, you know, I get, I get a decent grip. So right now my grip is not great. Uh, can you push up so they can see? So he's, I have a marginal grip because I, I'm connected to my wrist. But Kevin is defending quite well. Guys, by the way, how's the sound? I hope it's good, but I don't know for sure. So I'm holding on to my wrist, and Kevin is successfully defending arm and guillotine, no arm guillotine. So what I'm going to do is when that happens, I'm going to prop up and I'm going to go perpendicular. This is a proven necktie. Kevin will roll. I will steer him and switch it into an anaconda. Let's do it from the other side. All right, there. Good. Good. <laughs> so, so, so I'm going to do it from the other side, guys. Sounds okay. Sounds okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm moving to Holland. So, <laughs> so um, again, I'm going to uh, lift him up a little bit so you can see the grip, but f uh, watch how this goes down. He has, once you put a Peruvian necktie, that choke comes on, but it's slow. A very easy way for him to defend him, almost 90 plus, 95, 98% of the people, when you hit him with a Peruvian necktie, they will roll. All I do is just steer them with my outside leg and switch into Anaconda. So let's look at it again. So Kevin does a good job, great fighting. So uh, let, let them see for a second. So notice how my grip is very marginal, very marginal. So when I get this, guys, I'm gonna prop up and I'm gonna sit to Peruvian necktie. So the pressure of my left leg pushes his, his neck 
into the choke. But very easy to defend by jumping over. So I just steer with my leg. My leg also happens to be in exact place to take that arm away. And now his grip is useless. So uh, I don't know. I think I addressed that issue maybe in the guillotine DVD on BJJ Fanatics. How do you break a guy down when they have a really good defense uh, in the turbo? And I've, I've done things like I switch. There is, you know, at Hentos, there's a lot of guys that have good guillotines. So when you have a good guillotine, a lot of the other guys, a lot of the other guys are good defending them because they keep getting hit with them. So when uh, you have to come up with other things to attack. So another one, this is a uh, specific old school Hendo black belt uh, that used to just basically kind of stick out this arm. So I, I <laughs> so, so again, so when he starts to give me that arm, I just basically bring this over and done. Um, another guy that used to train, um, you know, uh, another really, really good big name black belt. So he would, you know, and he would posture up. So I literally fly like a monkey around to the, to the back side. I don't think you can do it. I'd probably break your arm on this one. But, you know, when they posture up, I just pin it around to, the far, to, to, to an arm bar. So I, as I'm hunting, I, I've done it with Enrique. Well, there's a couple videos I've done it with Enrique. So maybe if you guys uh, uh, maybe refer back to some of these videos. Fortunately, Adolfo Ferranda, the long time viewer from California, has updated all the episodes. There's an index of techniques. Guys, it's on episode 50. You don't, you cannot see it if you don't have the app. If you have the, I cannot see it. I, I have the link to it. So sometimes I send it to people, but it's on episode 50 of the antivirus edition. So if you refer back to it, if you cannot find it, talk to somebody that's, you know, friend on, on one of these things. And uh, there's a link to all the techniques that we've covered, you know, because some of the, some of the topics we covered in different, different episodes. So I hope that answers your question. How are we doing on, on questions there, Hank? Well, there's a, someone asked, asked for the escape from the DARS, which is uh, oh, a bit like the Anaconda. The <laughs> 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 there's no escape. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there, is this, there is an escape. And, and again, yeah. uh, guys, you got to understand, pretty much escape from any submission is, it's possible. Uh, you know, if Kemmel's on my back, put two hooks in, choke full of luck, I can escape if I can peel off the arm, peel off the other one, but by then, usually people are tapping. It's the same thing with the, with, with the darts, that if you get caught late, once, once it's locked in, because don't forget, there is, there is uh, some submissions where, you know, if you have a marginal grip, your hand, the, the attacker's hand will get tired and start to slip. But with the darts, the hand is anchored deep into the, into the elbow. So it's a very strong structure that can withstand quite a lot of movement. So usually, if I get caught in, in the dark, so if I see it coming, like for example, and Kendall catching me, my first thing is to go flat. So my first reaction is to go flat and try to take out this arm. So let's look at that again. But again, you know, one, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have a super strong neck. You can probably see this. <laughs> that I'm not, you know, if, if if the guy gets a full bite and it's fully locked on. Uh, it's been a while since I got caught in this, but but it you know you what's won't, you won't know why. <laughs> but if that's a, I mean, it's very difficult to escape once it's fully locked on. So you have to feel that submission coming before it's fully locked on. So again, so a lot of times people do it, especially maybe half guard or something, try to go to the back, and now Kemmel, I see him, I feel immediately when I see his right arm going um, going under my head and starting to, to pull my head in. I'm gonna go flat and try to get room on my left side. If, uh, so you stay a little tighter, but even if he's, so, yeah, a little tighter. So if I go flat, even if I cannot get my arm out, the choke is not quite the same. Now I'm going into defending a, a possibly a north-south choke. So you have to understand that usually if you go against a high level guy, the submissions don't come in, okay, here's one and done. Either it works or it doesn't, no. So chances are you might go from one submission to the next. But if you know what his next submission is, because logically, 
the position that I wound up in, Camel's follow-up attack should be north south choke. So I'm, I'm, I'm not just defending the dorse, I'm defending the follow-up as well. All right? So as long as I can go flat, I should be safe. It's still going to suck, but I should be safe. So let's look at it one more time. So as, as he starts to lock up, I'm already looking at my legs. I'm already going flat, even if he isolates. I bring my, uh, and now he's going north-south. And now I'm back in, back in business. So immediately I'm going from defending the doors down to, and then immediately after that I'm attacking, I'm, I'm defending his follow-up attack, which would be north, north south choke. So my hand's already, I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning, if he doesn't do it, that's okay. If he backs away, that's okay. I just went into defending something that didn't happen, but that's okay because then he backs off and there's no more threat. But I usually always, you know, I try to train with high-level guys and I'm always thinking, well, okay, what, what is next? What is next? What can they hit me with? Guys, we're coming up on, on about 20 minutes. So maybe we, we answer one more question and then we close it up because then we got to go back to Breda and I got to teach. Okay, this one from the Justin, the UN. Ezekiel chokes are making a resurgence in my gym. Do you think it's a legit move or are they just hitting it on me like crazy because I'm a white belt? Uh, a little bit of both. <laughs> 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 so it's a good question. Uh, uh, Ezekiel chokes uh, can be very effective, just like wrist locks. Uh, but if you see them coming, you can start to defend them. You know, when you just start out, you don't know. First, it's a process. First. You know, people hit you with, with Ezekiel choke. It, it could be anything else. It could be other, other things. And you're like, what the hell just happened? I don't even know what happened. And two weeks later, you're kind of like, oh, okay, I know what's, I know what's going on. I know. And, and, I, and, then, and then maybe a week later, you start to see, okay, I, I, you can start to see setting it up. And that's when you start to possibly defend it better. Um, so I like no Ezekiel chokes. They can be very effective. Um, if uh, people with Ezekiel chokes are... Very, very effective. I, you know, I've, I've seen, um, you know, black belts get submitted with an Ezekiel choke by somebody in their bar at that level. So, you know, that's a no-no, you know, to attack. When generally speaking, that's a no-no. You fume somebody's bar, you don't try to submit them. But it can happen. So it can happen to you, uh, you know, you, you just started, but it can happen to a black belt. Sometimes that stuff happens. So. We have any other last minute questions? Oh, okay. Or? We don't have to. It's okay. I'm having a good time. Kevin's having a good time, so might as well. If not, we're going to close it out. We're about 24 minutes in. We're, I try to keep it like an American sitcom. 22 minutes. Was it 22 minutes? <laughs> so we can fit in the commercials oh. at some point. <laughs> now there's a question about De La Hiva. Okay, uh, De La Hiva passing options to pass the De La Hiva. Oh, okay. Guys, why don't you put that in uh, for the comments? We try to, this is a little bit more involved. So then maybe we take that up next week, all right? Next week he's going to be in, uh, in the gi. Well, I'm going to be traveling. I, I, maybe I'll film this. Guys, put some questions. So if I do it, I'm traveling again next week. I know next week. So if uh, I either do a, uh, a tape it beforehand or um, I'm going to try to find somebody to film in Dallas. Um, or, but maybe put some questions. Del Hiva passing options. That might be a good one to, to, uh, to answer for next time. All right, guys? So share, like, subscribe, uh, buy the DVDs. Buy, yeah, this is my commercial. Buy the DVDs. Guys, oh, I forgot. The split guard just came out. If you don't know what it is, don't look at the, 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 the teaser video or the short video they put up. It doesn't really demonstrate well what a split guard is. I actually shot my own. It's very short. I put it on Facebook. Um, but the DVD is out. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions, guys. And I will see you next Friday. I, well, we're in October. I don't even know what October day that's going to be. It's okay. Well, we'll see you next, next Friday, guys. <laughs>